Thanks very much. So uh, when I was serving as chancellor of the University System of Ohio, uh, I used to get invited to give a lot of commencement speeches. We had 14 universities, 23 community colleges. They were hired up for speakers. It, it's actually, it's a, it's a great honor to do this. And of course, it occurs mostly in the springtime. So every spring, I'd start to prepare my uh, commencement addresses for that year. And, and I started to notice that the media uh, that time of year was running human interest stories that were exploring the possibilities that the graduates in that year's graduating class have to get a job. Um, and as you can imagine, uh, particularly in recent years, the stories were almost always negative, right? You know, there was no way the graduates were going to get a job. You know, they were going to end up moving back home, living in their childhood bedroom, working at Starbucks if they even were able to get that good a job. Uh, they weren't going to be able to pay back their debts. The whole thing uh, was going to be a disaster. This is year by year uh, by year. Now. Again, as chancellor, you can imagine this uh, upset me. Uh, this is the ultimate failure, you would think, of, uh, uh, of uh, higher education. Um, and of course, it upset our key stakeholders, too. The students weren't very happy about this. Uh, students went to college, after all, thinking that we were going to uh, train them uh, and enable them to, uh, uh, to get a good job. It didn't make their parents very happy, who had paid for the education uh, in many cases, expecting that uh, their kids were going to get a job. Uh, but interestingly, and for me as chancellor, the stakeholder that was the most upset about this uh, were our public policy leaders, right? Our governor and our state legislators, who were the ones who were taxing the people and giving the money to the public universities on the belief uh, that this was helping them create a vibrant uh, uh, economy and a vibrant uh, workforce. And in fact, exactly the opposite was the case, right? Because uh, if these stories were true, and by the way, I should say that Statistically, they were true, right? During these years, we knew uh, that uh, there were more people entering, trying to enter the job market than there were actual jobs being created. So assuming these stories are true, and we're training uh, students and graduates uh, to get a good job, what do they do? If there's no jobs there, they leave, right? So what we're doing is we're training uh, our students basically to leave our state and go somewhere else uh, and get that job uh, for which we've prepared them. And as you can imagine, nothing upsets uh, the governor or the legislators more uh, than spending uh, tax dollars, uh, uh, say the Ohio uh, residents' tax dollars, to train the workforce of New York or of Chicago or of California. It's not exactly how you uh, go about uh, getting uh, reelected. Uh, so uh, this was obviously uh, something that was uh, bothersome, but there was, uh, there was actually something else about it that bothered me uh, even more deeply, just that we were letting down our, uh, our key stakeholders. And that is that I saw it as a huge, huge missed opportunity. Uh, and that, oppor that missed opportunity is, uh, is that while we were focusing uh, on trying to help students get their first job, we weren't inspiring them to create their first job. And that's really a missed opportunity, because the truth is, uh, when, you ins when somebody creates a job for themselves, in all likelihood, they're also creating a job uh, for others uh, as well. Um, and, so, uh, uh, and so we begin to uh, ask ourselves, uh, what is it that, uh, that we can uh, do about this? Now, by the way, the squandered opportunity uh, is, uh, is not um, the, uh, the fault of the media, right? They're the ones who, uh, uh, who, uh, who were telling the truth. Uh, and it's not their job to define, the, uh, to define how higher education addresses this. The squandered opportunity really was on the part uh, of us in higher education, because either by not having a story to tell at all and letting the media define the story, or by buying into this story that it's about graduates getting, uh, getting a good job, uh, we were affirming this storyline. Uh, so I started to begin to think about this question, um, and uh, the truth uh, is that it's not that universities aren't thinking about their role in economic development. In fact, increasingly, they are. Um, the universities, particularly public universities, are embracing their role uh, as uh, drivers of economic prosperity as part of the traditional university mission. You know, a traditional university mission has three parts, teaching, research, and service. Um, and, uh, and universities understand today uh, that uh, economic development and being part of the, the growth driver uh, in their community uh, is part of that mission. 
The, the, the problem, though, is that, uh, that usually when they think about their role as economic drivers, uh, what they tend to focus on is the research that they do and then the tools and the techniques necessary to commercialize that research and have it lead to uh, a, uh, a new business that creates uh, some new jobs. So they focus on the tools of tech transfer, uh, they focus on the tools of commercialization, and all of this uh, is, uh, is important, by the way, and far be it for me to, uh, to diminish uh, the importance of university-based research, particularly uh, in this region uh, of this state, where you have three major public universities, University of Michigan, Michigan State, State and Wayne State University that collectively are doing over two billion dollars a year uh, of funded research. This is off the charts on any ranking uh, and certainly uh, is terrific compared to any uh, comparable region uh, in, uh, uh, in the country and maybe, uh, maybe even in the world and it's contributing significantly to the uh, rebirth of a, a tech-based uh, economy, uh, and we should particularly mention Wayne State University, not just because it's in the title of my talk, but because uh, it's one of the leading urban research universities uh, in the country. The hundreds of millions of dollars that it brings in every year for funded research uh, is helping attract extraordinary talent uh, to, uh, uh, to this community that is part uh, of, that, uh, of that economic rebirth. But, and you, you knew there was a but coming, right? Uh, but the problem with focusing just on the research tech commercialization for universities as their economic development uh, contribution is that most basic research doesn't really lead to a commercialization breakthrough. Uh, and even if it does, it takes years, if not decades, to see the full commercial potential uh, of something that's happening in, in basic research. Uh, no, I, I subscribe to uh, the view held by uh, many experts that where the real jobs and economic growth come from uh, is by the application of an existing technology uh, to a new uh, problem or a new uh, consumer need uh, that, is, uh, that is emerging uh, in the economy. So the best example I can think of is the company I work for, Battelle. We do a lot of research uh, for uh, the United States military. Um, and uh, years ago, we were very proud to be asked uh, by the Department of Defense to see if we could develop a material that would harden the sides of the Humvees. You know, these vehicles that the soldiers are, uh, are uh, driving down the roads in very dangerous areas um, and they're being subject to you know, road bombs and, and other explosions. And the more we could uh, harden these, uh, uh, these vehicles, the more we could protect them uh, from serious uh, injury or death. Uh, and uh, we very proudly uh, worked on that project and, and hopefully had some, uh, some measurable success. It turns out uh, that the uh, researchers who worked on the project were big golfers. Um, and as they were doing it, they're thinking, you know, I think this material that we're putting on the side of these Humvees uh, would make a great abrasion-resistant uh, uh, material on the outside of a golf ball. Uh, and so that's how you got the new advances in your Titleist golf balls and your other, uh, and your other golf balls uh, that uh, are enabling them to fly farther um, uh, and last longer. Uh, so if this is true, uh, if this is where most new uh, jobs and businesses, uh, economic growth are going to come from, then let's come back to thinking about the role of a university. Because after all, uh, what could be a great place uh, to think about the kinds of applications of existing technologies to new problems. Well, how about if we started a place uh, where there are thousands of people uh, who are following the latest technological developments in a wide range of fields very, very closely and know what those technological uh, developments are? So, of course, it turns out uh, that, uh, uh, that the place where we can find these people uh, is at a university. Uh, and we call them uh, faculty. And here we, at Wayne State University, uh, we have uh, thousands of them. But it's not enough just to have those people who are thinking about uh, the, uh, and aware of the technological developments uh, in, their, uh, in their industries, uh, but what about if you also put them in, uh, with thousands of, uh, of people who are really paying attention to the latest consumer trends, right? Uh, who know what consumers need, who want to do the hot, new, cool thing. Well, it turns out 
Wayne State has about 32,000 of those people. We call them students, right? Uh, and then we do something that's really, really creative. We put those people who are following technological trends uh, very, very closely, together with those people who are interested in the hottest, coolest thing, we put them together in the same place, and we call them classrooms. And sometimes, on a broader place, we call them campuses. Uh, and the result is that we have the integration uh, of these two talent. Now, uh, you may think that I'm being flip and, and that I'm uh, oversimplifying uh, this, um, uh, this uh, idea. But uh, if, this, uh, if I have a chance here, uh, if it works, we've got a slide that I'd like to show you uh, that is a list of the companies um, that were created uh, in dorm rooms as the result of class projects. And you know some of these companies. There's a lot more uh, that, you, uh, that you don't know. And the truth is, these are not all Harvard uh, and uh, Stanford and MIT. There's companies up there that were created at the University of Miami, at Lehigh, at Boston University, at Northeastern University, at Pomona College. These are companies that are now worth trillions uh, in, uh, uh, in uh, economic value and employ millions, uh, millions of, um, of students. So uh, I, I called this uh, talk, uh, uh, Who Needs MIT, for a reason. Uh, it's not because MIT is not an impressive place. It's an incredibly impressive place by any uh, standard of imagination. The, 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 the companies that, that come out of, their, uh, out of their labs and out of their schools, just uh, unbelievably impressive. But, but I called it that because it's not really the research component there that's driving the success, or at a place like Stanford, for that matter. It's the emphasis on entrepreneurship. It's the emphasis on bringing things uh, uh, to, uh, to creating new businesses and to creating opportunities uh, for themselves and for others. It's recognizing that creating their own opportunities uh, is as exciting, more exciting, uh, than just going to work uh, for, for somebody else's opportunity. So I've been following uh, uh, this, uh, uh, this conversation about Detroit uh, and the reinvention of Detroit, and I've been following the incubators and the tech town and the, uh, and the emphasis on entrepreneurship, uh, and it's all incredibly exciting. It's really cool. It's really cool. Congratulations. Um, but the truth is, if we're going to get to that scale, right, where we're creating the thousands of companies uh, and the hundreds of thousands of jobs and the millions of jobs, then we're going to have to get a better yield uh, of economic growth out of our great urban research university here. And we can do that, right? Imagine a university that doesn't care about the other rankings that usually uh, that people follow, but wants to be number one in the number of student and faculty businesses that are created. Imagine a university that at graduation, when you call the student up for their diploma, allows them to make a pitch for their new company uh, from, uh, you know, from the podium uh, at graduation. Uh, imagine a university that rewards faculty uh, uh, who help start businesses with students the same way we do faculty who publish, uh, who publish papers. Imagine a university that helps pay off student loans and student debt uh, for students who started a new business and employed somebody else uh, as just like we do when they're able to, uh, uh, to, uh, to get a job uh, with, uh, with a regular company. Imagine a university that fills the gym, the basketball arena, with cheering crowds as the students and the faculty come rushing in uh, uh, to, uh, into the center court with cheerleaders, you know, calling out their name, all uh, because they've started uh, a new company uh, and they're to be recognized uh, for that. That's the kind of, uh, that's the kind of, uh, of innovation uh, that we can have uh, from a great university uh, that doesn't need to be MIT. It just needs to be a university uh, that is uh, priding itself uh, on its contribution uh, to the lives of these students. So let me just close by, say, by saying that, you know, the public universities uh, in, um, in this country are, in my opinion, uh, and I know I'm biased because I help lead a, a, a university system, uh, they're, in my opinion, it's the greatest invention this country has ever made. It's the envy of the world, truly. I mean, think about it. You can go to any major urban center um, and you will stumble across a large comprehensive public university with research labs uh, and, uh, and libraries, or you can drive down a rural road in any of 50 states and come across an exit in the middle of a cornfield, and there is a major research university with laboratories and libraries and all sorts of the things. It's an absolutely incredible phenomenon. So the question really is, what can we do to, with the public universities now? What reboot is necessary 
and for them to be able to be the engine of growth uh, in our urban centers that we need them to, do, to be. Uh, and I would suggest to you uh, that it is making the mental shift from saying that it is our job to help prepare students to get their first job to inspiring them to create their first job. Thank you.